Good morning. We follow the order of Christian funeral with the service folder that has been passed out to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn Paulette and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears, and lead us to praise you for having brought her to faith. In your rising from the dead, you conquer death and open the gates to eternal life. Strengthen us with your word and lead us through this life until at last we are united with you and all the saints in glory everlasting. Amen. We speak Psalm 23. Let's speak those words together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's sing the Lord's My Shepherd. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. The Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus gives us this comfort, 
I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, we will be before the throne of God. Never again will we hunger. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. He will lead us to springs of living water. Let us pray. God of all grace, you sent your Son, Jesus, to destroy the power of death and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we too shall live. Comfort us with your promise that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The first lesson for this day is found for us in the prophet Isaiah chapter 12. In that day you will say, I will praise you, O Lord, although you were angry with me. Your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. This is the word of our Lord. Here a lesson also from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the great resurrection chapter. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is the word of our Lord. And hear the gospel lesson from John chapter 11. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Mar Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, 
I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. This is the word of our Lord. Let's sing the next hymn for all the saints. Paulette Iverson of Racine, age 75, went to heaven to be with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on November 2nd, 2020, at Ascension All Saints, Racine. She was born on January 26, 1945, to Irma and Paul in Jacksonville, Florida. On October 8, 1988, Paulette was united in marriage to Robert at First Evangelical Lutheran Church in Racine. She was employed at Bank of Elmwood, retiring in 2007 after many years of service. Paulette was a faithful member of First Evangelical Lutheran Church and served on the Ladies' Aid and Altar Guild. Along with her husband, Paulette found great enjoyment in golf, petanque, and traveling on many European and Hawaiian vacations. She was she also enjoyed traveling throughout the U.S., especially the villages of Florida. Above all else, spending time with her family, especially with her grandchildren, was her greatest joy. Paulette will be missed by her husband Robert, daughter Karen and Michael of Wauwatosa, stepchildren Rachel and Max of Juneau, Alaska, and Tricia and Peter of Millador, Wisconsin. Grandchildren, Jacob, Emily, Shelby, Lillian, Madeline, Abigail, and Simon. Sister, uh, Darlene and John of Marietta, Georgia. Nephew, Ben, and nieces, Caitlin and Nicole. She is further survived by great nieces and nephews, other relatives and dear friends, including her church family. Paulette 
is preceded in death by her mother, Irma. It's for the very hope of seeing her once again that we turn to the Word of God for comfort, and we find it here today in Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, and especially you, the family. Paulette passed away actually a day after the festival of all saints. In the, in the church, November 1st is actually the day in which has been set aside to celebrate that festival that goes back centuries. And we actually celebrated it not only on that Sunday of November 1st, but also the day that she died, November 2nd. We celebrated on a Monday night here. I thought it was just kind of fitting to see the Lord's timing in all this. How appropriate it is that he take out one of his saints on all saints. After all, that's what Paulette is. She was and is a saint. And did you hear what the psalmist said about saints? Precious. In the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. As one of his saints, Paul had his precious in his sight. Precious even in death. You know, Paulette is precious to you, faithful wife, a dear mother, a beloved grandma, good friend, a, a good church member, a dedicated volunteer, and yet... None of those things made her a saint. In fact, it was really quite the opposite. When she came into the world, she was in the same boat that each and every one of us humans are in. She was sinful at birth, sinful from the time her mother conceived her. Far from holy, far from perfect. And eventually, her words and her actions would also reveal that fact. But the Lord acted on her behalf to change her status permanently. He brought her to faith and sealed it through holy baptism, her baptism that would mean a lot, certainly. What would baptism mean to her? What, what does it mean to anyone who is baptized finally? The German hymn writer Paul Gerhardt explains, In baptism we now put on Christ. Our shame is fully covered with all that he once sacrificed and freely for us suffered. For here the flood of his own blood now makes us holy, right, and good before our heavenly Father. By receiving Christ's name at baptism, and she also received the benefits of what that name represents. It was Christ's innocent sufferings and death on Calvary that covered all Paulette's sins and made her holy. And now through faith in what Christ has done for her, she became a saint of God. And so as one of God's own, as one of Christ's own blood-bought souls, Paulette, was and is precious to him. So precious that he always promised her to be with her to the end of the age, right? Just as he does with each of us. And just think about how important that was for her. Especially this last year being in virtual isolation for several months but the Lord was there by her side. And the Lord kept the promise even last Monday as she went through the valley of the shadow of death. And so that brings us to today too, doesn't it? Today we also keep in mind that Paulette's death is precious to the Lord too. In fact, the words that Jesus spoke on the cross to one of the thieves that was, was next to him, are words that she's realizing right now. I tell you the truth, Jesus said. Today you will be with me in paradise. 
Just think about what that means. Think about what paradise is really all about. The book of Proverbs tells us that when calamity comes, the wicked are brought down, but even in death, the righteous have a refuge. Think of paradise or heaven as a refuge, a safe haven, a place where no harm can ever come to you again, can never reach any of the Lord's saints. And so that's so true with Paulette right now. Nothing can harm her being a permanent resident in heaven. Isaiah elaborates a little bit more on on what it means for Paulette. The righteous perish, and no one ponders it in his heart. Devout men are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. So now being a a permanent resident of heaven, Paulette has been spared from all evil. Never again will she experience it, either in her own heart or or around her. And now she only experiences a perfect peace, a peace that means that she'll never again be bothered by guilt or suffering of any kind, fear, anxiety. Never again. There she experienced a a perfect rest. No longer will her mind or body have to endure, endure pain and suffering or isolation. With those things in mind, it's no wonder that the author to Ecclesiastes actually stated that the day of death is better than the day of birth. The day of birth... Is something we celebrate, right? We're thankful to welcome a child into the world. No doubt that was the case with Paulette too. But there's a day that's even better for the child of God, for the believer, or for the saint. Death opens up the door to the paradise of heaven. And Revelation pictures that scene, a wonderful scene in which we see a great multitude of of saints gathered around the throne of God, dressed in white robes that had been washed in the blood of the Lamb, meaning they had been completely cleansed. And they're surrounding that Lamb of God who was slain for the sins of the world. Now picture Paulette in one of those robes. Through faith in Christ... Picture yourself there, too, next to Paulette and all others who are speaking and singing praises to Christ, the Lamb of God. For you see, just as Paulette is precious to God, precious to Christ, so are you. Through faith in Jesus as your Savior, you are a saint, which means that one day, you too will see Paulette once again. And better yet, with your own eyes, you will also see your Savior, whose company Paulette now enjoys. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's sing, I'm but a stranger here.
Almighty God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. We remember especially our loved one, Paulette, whom you have redeemed by the blood of your Son and received as your dear child through holy baptism. We thank you for giving her to us as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. Lord, in your mercy, we praise you for your love in Christ, which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrows, help us find strength in the fellowship of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, you do not leave us comfortless, but strengthen and care for us through your word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in your promises and care. Lord, in your mercy, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. From here we'll go out to the cemetery. You're invited to join us.